All right, so here's where we find ourselves with the brass work. I got the handle drawing, I've got the plate etching, um, and so now it's time to turn our attention to the brass. Uh, these are the posts that hold the handle to the saw plate, um, and obviously there's just four of them, um, and they're tiny. And so what I need to do is I need to clean up and resurface the faces of the brass pieces. So I'll get you a little close up of what these look like before, and then we'll see them after. Okay, so there's the Distin logo on this one. Like I said, it's a 19, pre-1914 Distin, um, but pretty much every other one looks like this. So that's what the heads look like and what the little slots look like. So we'll clean all these things up, make them super pretty. is looking. I still have to file and clean out those slots, but the button tops are super shiny and polished. I went through all the grits from uh, 400 up to 2000 and then a cotton buffing wheel. And here's how the Distant Sons logo turned out. I left, I don't want to clean out everything. I could take a little Dremel tool and chemically take it out or a Dremel tool with a uh, brightening pad and get rid of it all, but I like the little bit of contrast between the brass. So it's all the grime's gone and everything else, um, but that way you can see it nice and crisply. All right, let's move on to the next step. So here's where we find ourselves. I have the etch on the blade. See that whale with all that patterning? Okay. I tried to model the whale a little bit with the bluing so it was a little more organic than just a solid black shape. Um, but the etch is in there nice and deep. See that? Uh, have a quick little seal on the back there. So it'll have the, my name on there. Uh, but the next step is to sharpen this. It's kind of dull. Uh, I'm also missing a tooth that broke out before it was mine. But I'm not going to refile everything for that tooth because I don't want to lose that much material. I'm going to file it down to where it's blended a little better, but I don't want to lose it all. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to file down the edge of this until it's fair and nice and smooth, and I can hit all the peaks. And then I'll take a saw file, right? And that's how I'll take and file the individual teeth all the way down. And then I'll use a set, a saw set, and set the teeth to the proper angle that they need. Uh, for those that are not familiar, a saw set is a tool like this. They come in all different types and sizes. This is one of my favorites. Um, and this runs from five TPI, five teeth per inch, to 12 TPI. And then I have one that's finer from 12 to 28 or something like that. Um, and all it does is there's a little anvil in here. I'll zoom in so you can see it. So there's a little anvil in here. You can see there's a, a, a silver one and a little black one that pops out at the end there. That little anvil pushes against the side at a specified uh, angle. And so that's actually leaning against each tooth, every other tooth all the way down the saw blade. So I'll do one side leaning to the left and the other side leaning to the right. And that's how you get the set to clear the chips in your, in your uh, hand saws. So next, I want to address how to hold a saw blade. Uh, you're going to see me do it, but I do it a little differently. This is a saw vise. You have a little lever here that opens up to create a slot for your saw to sit in. You clamp it down, this clamps to your bench, and you would file the saw. They make these in all different types. Some are cork lined, some are just steel. Um, I have one like this. I have a few like the one you just saw, but I only have one like this I recently got from my grandfather. Um, and so this one actually opens up this way. There's a little slot, and you can clamp it shut, a little cam action, uh, and that holds the saw between these two places, and you would file along that uh, line. And this would just clamp to your bench. 
But of all these fancy things and of all the different ways, uh, still my favorite way is before I got any of those tools or found any of those tools, uh, my favorite way was this. I just took two pieces of wood, profiled them, see like that, and uh, covered them in masking tape. And I put those in my vise. And that acts as my saw vise. And um, I'm actually way more comfortable with these than the other ones crushing this pretty blade. So I'm just gonna use these and we'll file away. So you can see here what's going on. I am leveling all the teeth until I just nick every tooth. So as you can see, a lot of these teeth were proud and a little taller than the others. So once I get a reflection on every tooth, no matter how small, I'm then going to file those teeth all to be the same height. So I've got all the primary shaping done. So what I've done is filed at an angle every other tooth, right? Uh, down the way until all that black marker that you saw me put on is gone to where I know that all the points of these are level now. So the next step and last step is I will adjust the plate and take a single pass or two or three passes, but the same pass every angle flip the paint every angle so that's my fine tuning actual sharpening so what i just did was shaping and so now uh for sharpening So I got the handle all done up where I'm happy with it. It was a little dark so I took off some of the black and relieved or revealed some of the red a little more. Um, so now what I've left to do is assemble it. So my only fear that always in making these things, uh, I have two fears in working on saws. One is cutting the slot crooked, which this one is not. Uh, if that drifts at all, it really it poorly affects the performance. Um, and then secondly, if your holes line up. Otherwise you gotta rebore holes in a plate and it makes it loose and all that jazz. So if you're precise enough, it shouldn't be a problem, but we'll check. Um, let's put it together. All right, that's simple. So all my holes line up. So now we just gotta assemble the brass do some final cleanup, and it's ready to go. So there we go, we got it all wrapped up. I got the hardware in, got everything polished up. Um, <clears throat> had to do a little couple tweaks. Uh, to one of these, the threads was actually kind of banged up. So I got that cut straight um, and everything is in good and square. So here she is, etched across the full length of the plate. Front and back. 
And I'll get some glamour shots um, that we'll play after this, but first we'll do a test cut and uh, see how she rips and roars. Meow. All right, so we're here to test our whale flooring saw. Now I imagine this would have been filed as a rip saw if it was used for primarily flooring, um, but it was filed cross cut when I got it. Um, so instead of taking the teeth all the way down to nothing, um, I filed it cross cut as well. And so uh, that way the teeth weren't so tiny. But anyway, so it'll work both ways. But here we go. Let's try it. Cross cut. Uh, first test of the uh, floor saw. Not bad. All right. Well, that's all she wrote. Hope y'all enjoyed.